two things one the protest movements their origin and then 79 which is uh my understanding a pretty big moment in the history of u.s taiwan relations when um the u.s formally recognizes the people's republic of china as basically the repository of chinese sovereignty broadly speaking so could we talk a little bit about um those protest movements are they part of global 1968 um do they come from somewhere else is it a is it a something linked to as it is in uh, the United States, the baby boom generation. Um, if you could talk about those for a second. Yeah. So um, the, the Don Wai movement outside the party movement is a little bit later than, so it's not part of the 1968 uh, uprisings. And it's mostly, it begins mostly as an elite kind of intellectual movement. So scholars, journalists. Finally, uh, we affect something. I know. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, and for the most part, they were, you know, like, they were publishing in uh, publications that that were were kind of you know it, this gray zone where they were trying to navigate around government controls over media, and uh, the government doesn't crack down right away in some instances. So they managed to get out a few major publications, and there were a couple incidents where the government did crack down. Uh, there's the the Gaoshan incident, which is city of Gaoshan was where one of these publications was was printing. And this uh, incident led to widespread. Um, first, first it was the, the arrest of these editors that were publishing this magazine, and then it led to kind of widespread protests as people began to realize that um, you know this was a good thing. We don't want this to happen, uh, and that was kind of one of the major moments of the where the Dong Wai movement becomes very public, uh, and this is where the Guomindang becomes concerned. Um, I'd say that in terms of the the global influences, you know, a lot of these intellectuals were, were very much in interaction with uh, Taiwan's diaspora. A, a, a number of these intellectuals had been blacklisted, meaning that they uh, had fled the country and uh, were not allowed to return. But they had been communicating within throughout, so within Taiwan, and then most of them had fled to Europe or to the United States. And so there was this constant communication back and forth. And so there was the influence of kind of uh, American and European intellectual circles that they had been kind of um, trained uh, speaking with intellectuals outside of Taiwan. And that had also influenced kind of the democracy movement within Taiwan. And of course, 1979, um, that was kind of a big part of the existential crisis. You know, the United States was the the most rock solid, I mean, to borrow words from Anthony Blinken, uh, the most rock solid supporter of of the Republic of China on the international stage. And so 79, I think, really um, caused a lot of Taiwanese to, to kind of go into existential crisis mode. Um, that, I think, had a part to play within democratization. And also that the United States, of course, was in some ways, you know, a big proponent of democratization. And um, when Taiwan democratized, of course, the United States was, was happy to see that happen. Uh, James, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about 1979 and how it impacted Taiwan, not just politically, but sort of socially. What was the sort of re repercussion? How did people respond to the United States changing its policy, uh, changing its China policy so uh, drastically? Yeah, I mean, it was certainly a shock to the Taiwanese people. Um, although I, I think that, you know, 71 was the biggest shock. I think that the the replacement of the ROC by the PRC in the United Nations. That was something that I think um, was probably the biggest existential shock. And then, uh, you know, of course, by then, a number of, of Western countries had already begun to switch recognition. So I think that the writing was kind of on the wall. But the United States, of course, had the most, um, the closest relationship with the Republic of China. And so 79 was also a big shock in terms of we're seeing that this is really the end of that formal relationship. There were some things that kind of softened the blow. You know, the, the Taiwan Relations Act um, kind of enshrined a minimum level of relationship, especially arms sales, which we've talked about before. Um, but I think that the, the existential crisis begins to define Taiwan's, I think from basically from 71 slash 79 onwards, this is the largest kind of political access in Taiwan. It's, it's what are we on the international stage? And so this is the reason why this, the so-called, you know, kind of independence 
slash non-independence thing is so big in Taiwan because...